It's been 11 years since we first jumped into the Animus and discovered the centuries-long war between the Assassins and the Templars. Now a staple of video game culture, Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed series has continued to evolve. From sneaking around to full-on fighting, we're here to look at the evolution of combat mechanics in the Assassin's Creed series. I'm Jet Set with the Leaderboard, and today we'll be going through the evolution of gameplay from Assassin's Creed 1 to Odyssey. We'll be skipping all the mobile and handheld stories. Sorry. Assassin's Creed 1. One. The game that brought the series to life, Assassin's Creed 1, puts you in the body of mega assassin Altair. When he's not disrespecting his elders, he's sneaking around the Holy Land eavesdropping. Assassin's Creed 1 sets the combat tone of the original series. Focusing on stealth, it takes to heart the creed, hide in plain sight, be one with the crowd. For the most part, you'll be going for those one-stab kills, pouncing on your enemies with your hidden blade, or throwing a dagger into some poor unsuspecting guard before blending seamlessly back into a group of scholars or scampering up a building. However, when you do have to get down and dirty, you'll find that Altair can tussle with the best of them. Hack and Slash is the name of the game here, and using your sword, there are about a dozen moves and counter moves in which to fend off multiple attackers. Effective combat here is largely going to fall on good timing, and while it is a hack and slash, button mashing isn't going to help you much. We'll be honest, it's not the best combat game. Assassin's Creed 2. A direct continuation of the previous game, Assassin's Creed 2 took all that was good in the first game and made it great in this one. With the focus remaining on stealth skills, our young Italian hitman Ezio now has a number of updated combat mechanics and options that really add finesse to his stabbing. Instead of just stabbing at a lone Templar with a hidden dagger, you can now stab at them with two hidden daggers, stab at them while leaping down from a high ledge, stab at them from the safety of a bale of hay, or or just go the old-fashioned way and pull them off a ledge. You know, after stabbing them, of course. Sneaking has also been kicked up a notch, and instead of just finding groups of scholars, you're able to slip off into any Italian crowd. You can even get creative and distract the guards by throwing money or smoke bombs, as well as hiring thieves or even prostitutes to distract them. What a glorious era 14th century Italy was. Assassin's Creed 2 opens up a virtual smorgasbord of weapons for you to play around with, with the added option of disarming an opponent and taking away the weapon that he was holding. Options range from hammers to spears to maces. There's even a particularly giant axe that you can borrow from the heavy guards for extra fun. But probably the best new weapon is the poison blade, which causes your victim to stumble around, causing a distraction, and the hidden pistol that will blow your enemies away. Literally. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. At this point, Assassin's Creed can do no wrong. Not only do we end up getting sentimentally attached to our boy Ezio, but the gameplay in Brotherhood is just so much fun. Brotherhood's additions to the combat system helped smooth out Assassin's Creed's admittedly clunky battle mechanics. Everything has been sped up, and while the swordplay is better, it becomes slightly too easy to string together one slash kills. The new kill streak feature allows Ezio to continuously move from enemy to enemy and perform multiple takedowns and executions using melee weapons. You can even perform dual executions as well. Sick. Keeping the theme of Brotherhood in mind, you can now recruit some assassins to your side by earning the loyalty of the common folk. Once they're loyal to you, you can send them out on missions and even call for their assistance in battle. Eventually, they become fully-fledged assassins. Calling your fellow assassins into battle brings about either a rain of arrows, them leaping out of a haystack, or charging in on horseback to help you fight. There really is nothing more satisfying than recruiting assassins and running Rome like a 15th century mob boss while they do all your dirty work. I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about one of the best new weapons in Brotherhood, the crossbow, which was basically a gun. More satisfactory than throwing knives, the crossbow lets you take down unsuspecting targets from afar. Assassin's Creed Revelations Revelations isn't a bad game per se, but it's also not a new game, and releasing Assassin's Creed year after year like FIFA led to some cloak and dagger fatigue. Set only a few years after Brotherhood, in Revelations, Ezio is older and apparently less concerned with stealth. The core gameplay makes mechanics remain about the same, with the biggest gameplay addition being the hook blade. A modification of the hidden blade, the hook blade consisted both of a curved hook and a regular blade, allowing you to zip line over the city as well as pickpocket someone mid-combat using the old hook and run technique. Surprisingly enough, Revelation has given Ezio bombs. Not the traditional weapon for an assassin, these are some down and dirty DIY explosives that you'll be crafting. Fill them up with anything you want. Gunpowder, smoke, poison gas, 
And if you want to make it rain, you can even fill it up with gold. Minstrels love gold. Assassin's Creed 3. The wild American frontier trades buildings for trees, counters for quick time events, and gameplay for bugs. Battles are quicker this time. They're more fluid as Connor can now auto lock, so slashing and somersaulting his way around the battlefield is easy. Unfortunately, nobody told this to the camera crew as we're met with some janky camera angles. On the plus side, there's a new mechanic where you can now fling an enemy body across you as a human shield. Assassin's Creed 3 adds a new element, hunting. There's no real need to go hunting for the story's sake, but jumping from a tree branch and killing a bunny from above is pretty fun. The material also comes in handy for crafting. The introduction of naval combat is a game changer for the Assassin's Creed series. Connor isn't just an assassin, but a captain too. It's majestic to sail the Aquila, firing and dodging cannonballs on the high seas. More often than not, you'll probably just be ramming straight into an enemy ship for a bloody melee showdown. Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag Black Flag is the non-assassin Assassin's Creed game. Edward Kenway, while possessing all the free running and stabbing skills of an assassin, is more of a rogue who would rather be out looting. In Black Flag, you're a 17th century pirate, and your equipment has been updated. Trading out knives and broadswords, you now sport dual-wielding pistols, cutlass swords, as well as a blowpipe and rope darts, which you're gonna need for those painfully annoying snipers. Now let's get down to the pirate stuff. You're gonna be spending about 50% of your time in Black Flag out on the water, and while you can board enemies to take their crew via melee combat, you can also leap from mast to mast and come hurtling down on your enemies. As for the actual ship battles, you'll be using your cannon, mortar, or fire barrels to take down enemy ships. Assassin's Creed Rogue Rogue, aka Black Flag version 2, introduces us to the most Irish of Irishmen, Shay Patrick Cormac. Cormac is one of the most interesting characters in the series, and he isn't even an assassin. He's a Templar. Being a Templar is pretty nifty. Like the Decepticons, they always get the best stuff. As a Templar, you get an air rifle instead of a blowpipe, as well as a pretty hefty grenade launcher. Your ship is cooler, with puckle guns instead of swivel guns, and you've even got an early machine gun on your ship. Most of Rogue plays like Black Flag. You sail your ship around, listen to pirate shanties, dig for treasure, beat people up in bars, and blow up other ships. Assassin's Creed Unity We're back on land, and everything in Unity is comfortingly similar to the beginning of the Assassin's Creed series. Unity opens up the sandbox world of the British-sounding French Revolution, giving us a free form way to assassinate people. No longer are we bound by the rules of poisoning a drink or sneaking through a certain entrance. In Unity, you can decide how to kill your target. And isn't that what being an assassin is all about? Customization reigns supreme in Unity, laying down the groundwork for future Assassin's Creed titles. You customize your weapons as well as your appearance in Unity, with different items offering varying bonuses to different aspects of the game, such as pants and boots that decrease fall damage or running noise. There are about 200 pieces of gear in Unity, and trust me, it's can get frustrating to keep track of. The combat has undergone a revamp as well. Gone are the chained execution moves of Black Flag and Assassin's Creed 3. It's now far more challenging to take down large groups of enemies as you can no longer spam your defensive moves. The counter button has been replaced by a parry command, and even if you've mastered all the moves, Arno himself can only handle a couple of blows before he gets his ass handed to him. Fun fact, Ubisoft has said that the new combat system is inspired by fencing, which explains the back and forth parry and riposte structure. Another big addition to the customization train is your character skill tree, which is split into four distinct categories, melee, ranged, stealth, and health, where you'll be able to choose where you want to spend your points on. Some of the previous standards, such as double assassinations and role recovery, will now need to be unlocked as well. Sadly, multiplayer has been removed in Unity, but has since been replaced with co-op, allowing you to summon up to three friends to run around and explore, or to engage in a collection of heist and assassination missions. Assassin's Creed Syndicate Syndicate refreshes the gameplay of Assassin's Creed franchise with not one but two lead assassins, Jacob and Evie Fry. Both characters are interchangeable throughout the game and use two different playstyles. Jacob has health and extra damage on his side, but Evie is faster, stealthier, and in a way, more brutal. The Templars have taken over Victorian London, and there's a restriction on open weaponry, so combat has shifted to focus more on hand-to-hand -hand or concealed weapons such as brass knuckles or cane swords. You'll start the game with your trusty throwing knives that now have the the added feature of activating traps in the environment, such as hanging barrels. The combat mechanics are similar to Unity, but have been ramped up a notch to be more action-heavy. Think Batman Arkham Asylum. You'll need to attack and counterattack your way through half a dozen foes in any given street fight, but the game now keeps track of your combos. You can upgrade your skills so that a higher combo means a faster dispatch,
damage or weaken multiple enemies at once for brutal multiple takedowns. In Syndicate, you don't have a brotherhood per se, but you do have your own street urchin gang called the Rooks. Like your previous assassins, they can be upgraded, called into combat, and sent out on missions. Assassin's Creed Origins Origins doesn't even try to hide the fact that it's not a stealth game anymore. It's combat heavy with outcroppings of stealth, crafting, and gear management, but not as much of a focus as with the previous games. Experienced gamers will recognize the new hitbox-based combat melee system of Origins from the Dark Souls series, but easier. This time when you fight, you'll be focusing more on blocking, dodging, and parrying. Origins expands your options by giving you a variety of moves to play with. In addition to a revised combat system, there's a new Mortal Kombat-esque adrenaline gauge that builds up during combat, giving you the ability to finish him or enter frenzy mode, during which Bayek is temporarily faster, stronger, and more resistant to damage. Assassinations have been tweaked slightly, and instead of being able to assassinate anyone with a pulse, your kills are limited to your stats. Your ability to kill is dictated by your level relative to the targets, and how many times you've upgraded your assassin's blade, which just isn't fun at all. The skill trees have gone through an upgrade, with three trees to choose from. Master Warrior, which focuses on melee combat, Master Hunter, which focuses on range combat and stealth, and Master Seer, which focuses on tools and manipulating the environment. Assassin's Creed Odyssey It's time to party like a Spartan, because Odyssey is set in ancient Greece, and it has the most aggressive combat system to date. Garn are the regular scheduled assassin counter kills from the first few games, and say goodbye to blocking altogether, because your shield is gone and has been replaced with the Spear of Leonidas. So expect to flex your pecs to dodge and parry attacks instead. Ancient Spartans were pretty weighed down by their helmets, shields, and weapons that movement wasn't always easy. But thankfully, Ubisoft didn't bring that historically accurate detail into the game. If you've watched 300 or if you've taken a look at any ancient Greek pottery, you'll recognize that the spear is the Spartan weapon of choice. In ancient times, Spartan spears were known as dories, and they were by far the most favored weapon. In Odyssey, you'll find that your spear gives you access to long-ranged attacks, stealth moves, and some kick-ass supernatural abilities. The Spartan Kick, which sends enemies flying, unfortunately not into a giant hole of death, is a force push to clear enemies, and it can even regenerate your health. These abilities can be used in the middle or end of an attack chain, allowing you to keep your enemies off balance. Your adrenaline meter from the previous game will now charge your spear instead. Ubisoft is touting Odyssey as a full RPG game, so expect a ton of personalization options and upwards of 30 abilities to pick from. Once again, I'm Jet Set, and thanks for watching. To get pumped for Odyssey, watch our 107 Facts video about the last game in the series, Assassin's Creed Origins. And remember to subscribe to the leaderboard. Thanks for watching.